Hello everyone, this is Truck Guy Joe. Thanks for your time today, thank you for joining me. I wanted to make this video to help John Deere tractor owners. In particular, those that own a 10 series that is a hydrostatic, that is an e-hydro. So this particular tractor here, I bought new, it's a 2003, it's a 4610, 44 horsepower, it is the e-hydro, it's a full wheel drive. And I'm gonna be replacing two sensors today because my cruise control stopped working and the load match feature also quit working. Uh, of the two sensors, one is the flywheel sensor, the other is the wheel speed sensor, the forward speed sensor, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that particular sensor uh, is a little more difficult to install, and I wanted to give you, you know, just a couple little tips to help you get through it so you know what to expect in order to actually get that sensor out and get it replaced. The flywheel sensor, piece of cake, I'll show you where that's at, but it's the wheel speed sensor that is the difficult one that requires some extra work. Uh, as far as these features and what they do, the cruise control is pretty self-explanatory. So here's a shot of the control panel. This is the button that controls the cruise. It's, you know, pretty simple. You use your foot pedal for your ground speed, get to the speed you like, set your cruise, you're good to go. But the other feature that some people may not be aware of or even use is the load match. And that switch is located right here uh, on the dash here, right next to the, to the left of the, the steering column. Let's imagine you have your brush hog on the tractor and you're going through some heavy brush going through a field and it's really starting to work the tractor, it's making it bogged down. And another name for that switch, that feature is called anti-stall. So what load match does, it lets the tractor catch its breath. So if your ground speed is up and you're bogging the engine, it'll slow the tractor down, let the RPMs get back up, get to the right PTO speed. And that way you're more efficient and you're not bogging the tractor down and basically stalling the thing. The load match, it also works when you're using the bucket. So let's just say you're scooping some dirt and you're working it kind of hard. You're getting into some heavy stuff. Uh, it'll, it'll basically slow the tractor down, let it catch its breath so you don't stall it out. Uh, so these two sensors, uh, once replaced, should enable these two features to work again. These John Deere tractors will flash out an error code or a diagnostic code on this panel right here. So you'll just want to either make a video of it or you can just write it down exactly what it's doing. You'll get a sequence of flashes, you know, short ones, also a longer one. And if there's multiple codes, it'll, you know, give you a break in between so you can track which ones are which. And once you get those codes, you should be able to reference your uh, service manual or contact your John, John Deere dealer uh, service center and they can tell you what sensors to get and, you know, lead you in the right direction if, if this is something that you're gonna attempt to fix on your own. The error code that my tractor threw was code number four. So when I referenced my service manual, it showed me that that is in direct correlation to anti-stall not working, which is the load match, and also cruise control being an operative. So I have both sensors out ready to go here, and it was recommended that I change both the forward speed sensor and the crank sensor and they're identical part numbers. Uh, same sensor for both locations. Now these are the original ones that came out of the tractor. So that number right there is LVA11184, and that one is no longer available, but the replacement for it, it's the exact same sensor, LVA17409. So on this particular model, the flywheel sensor is pretty simple. As you can see, we're on, you know, call it the, we're on the right side of the tractor uh, from where I'm standing here and it's located right here. So here's the plug, I already have it unplugged, I already have the old one out, uh, it just goes in right here. You got one retainer that holds it in, so I'll be putting that one back in, plug it in, and I'll put a wire tie just to hold it to that line. Good to go, that's the simple one. Now let's talk about getting into the forward speed sensor on the other side here, a little more complicated and involved. To get the process started, I did remove the back tire. That way I don't have to kind of lay on my back and work in a, in a tight space and have limited light. So by removing the tire, you can have a, you know, a work light, plenty of floor space, you can just sit on the ground and uh, get to the sensor. So here's where the sensor is located. And this is, this is uh, the point of the video is really just to help you understand this part of it. So uh, the sensor is located right here. And basically with this line being here, this is the filter for the transmission fluid. Uh, and it, you know, it's got a mouthpiece that goes in right here where it bolts to the transmission. This line's in the way. Even uh, with the hose clamp out of the way, you just could not slide the sensor out. Because remember, that sensor has a, a piece that's about this long, you know, a shank, if you will, that goes into the transmission. So uh, if you take this line off to get access to this, I mean, this whole system is filled with fluid. You're talking uh, the hydrostatics take 9.2 gallons. So there is a drain plug right here. So essentially, you're going to drain 
all the transmission fluid out. So if you're due for a service, great. This is a great time to do the filter. It's a great time to do, uh, there's also on the other side, there's a breather with a screen, you can clean that. Uh, but as you can see, this one was done on uh, June 2nd of 2019, pretty, re you know, well, not even a year yet. And I always put the hours down there. Uh, but this one was done recently, it, it, and based on the hours that I have now, it, it does not need to be done again, and the fluid was really clean. So in my instance, I just got two clean buckets and caught all the fluid. So once the fluid's gone, you can then disassemble this and not have a huge mess on your hands. So there's two bolts that hold this elbow, this mouthpiece on. There is an O-ring as well, so just make sure... Uh, and when I took this off, the O-ring did stick to the actual transmission housing, so just make sure you grab the O-ring, put it back inside here, everything's clean. Uh, but once this is removed, I unhook, uh, loosen up this hose clamp, could slide the rubber hose down. At that point, I could pull the sensor out, put the new one in. There's just one uh, retainer bolt that holds it. And once it's in, I just, you know, you know wire tight everything back and reassemble this real quick. Everything's nice and tight. Everything's good. Uh, so at this point, I, I can use the, I have a manual pump there. That pump has uh, extraction, but it also has uh, it can dispense. So I'm just going to use that manual pump to put the fluid uh, back in the filler. So it's, uh, let me get up real quick here, guys. Yep, so here's the filler around the back. You know, basically they would, you know, this is from standing here, it's on the left side. From the front, you'd be looking at the uh, right side. Uh, oil fill here for the transmission. Dipstick is right here to check the level. This Holt Industries. Harbor Freight pump is working like a charm. As I mentioned earlier, it can both, you know, evacuate and dispense. So, you know, I put the fluid in these five gallon buckets. I didn't have lids for them. And with the fender being here, to get a funnel into the filler, it's just kind of a tight spot and a one man job. You'd be fumbling around. Chances are, uh, even if I just was pouring it out of here, you know, I, you can pick this unit up and pour from here into a funnel i probably would have made a mess so a couple of pumps and this thing boom it's just going down all on its own just through suction so uh man definitely worth it at harbor freight for a one-man job to pull the fluid out of those buckets get it in here and then turn right around and put it right inside the transmission it's working really great the john deere service center when i picked up the sensors they recommended that once the sensors were installed to let it run for 10 minutes he said it would give the ECU time to cycle and it should clear any codes that are in it. I asked him about disconnecting the battery. He says, no, just let it, let it run 10 minutes, let it idle. So it's been out here now for 15 minutes just to be safe. So I'm not even going to shut the camera off. This is the moment of truth. I'm just going to hop on, start moving forward, and let's hope that we see that green cruise control light come back to life. So here we go. All right, so here's the cruise button right here. Bump up the RPMs a little. All right, so we're moving. If I set this cruise, that green light right here should come on. Here we go. Well, would you look at that? We've got cruise control. Putting on, on the pedal. Wow, that's great. That is great. Now, let me see if I shut it off, what'll happen? Yep, right to a stop. Also, I should mention at this point, it's no longer flashing any type of error code whatsoever. So I don't have any implements on at this point. You know, I do have a, a Harley rake uh, that I'll be using this year and I will be doing some, you know, finish mowing, brush hogging. So I won't know about the load match till then, but it's safe to say that if the cruise is working, I'm pretty confident that load match should be good to go as well. All right, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I appreciate your time and thank you for watching. I hope I could help somebody in some way, shape or form if they ever wanna take on this endeavor. Uh, really wasn't that difficult. I mean, overall, if I really would have hustled, I probably could have had the whole job done in about two hours. Uh, it probably took me two and a half, three, because I just kind of took my time and was kind of doing things in between as well. Uh, but other than that, uh, feel free to ask any questions or leave comments if you like. If you'd like to subscribe, uh, you're welcome to. Uh, but most importantly, I uh, just appreciate the opportunity to try to help someone. Uh, I'd like to wish everyone happy Easter. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.